Welcome to Rich Conversations. Today, we're going to do something completely different than what we've done in the past. We're going to go on a field trip to the Field Museum, my favorite place in the city. Just a heads up, the sound is a little muffed, if that's the terminology, because I'm wearing a mask the entire time. But I still think it turned out fine. After you finish listening, if you enjoyed it, let me know. We can do more episodes like this. I'm excited to share this adventure with you. Let's begin. All right, so we are at the Field Museum right now, Natural History Museum here in uh, Chicago, Illinois, and it's about like, what, seven degrees? It's it's pretty cold. Uh, So we're out here right on the lake, you know, nothing like being right on the lake when it's it's, uh, cold in early February. But I thought today we would go on an adventure because usually on the the show, we, we talk about different techniques that that I've learned and then how you can apply in life but I kind of want to show you in real time what it's like using these techniques and applying them in the moment. So I don't have anything uh, scripted I'm just gonna kind of walk around the field museum and you can kind of get a sense of what goes through my head when I'm, I'm visiting these places or when I'm when I'm out and about right not in the office aka my bedroom and apartment, right? So whenever I come to the Field Museum, the first thing that I notice, the first thing that strikes me, aside from just like the classic revival architecture from the outside with these big columns, and one of the first things I notice when I come in, right as I enter the door, is the smell. There's a particular smell of the Field Museum. and. It's old stuff. It kind of smells like, like grandma's attic, you know? You, ever, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's all this old stuff in the house, and the house hasn't changed since the 30s or 40s, and, uh, and as kids, you're adventuring around, and all this old stuff is kind of interesting. That's what I, I kind of feel here. There's kind of this warmth and this comforting feeling when I come here. It's like, it's like a big hug. The second thing about the smell is that it reminds me that nothing in this building is alive, except for the staff and the visitors and everything is dead. And there's this calmness. I find it very peaceful. It's almost like a space where time is just still. There's nothing to be concerned about. There's nothing to worry about. Because you're kind of reminded of your own mortality in a way. It's like you make this agreement when you come here that you leave the outside world behind while actually learning about the outside world from inside. So it's a very interesting concept, and I just find it so peaceful. The Field Museum is my favorite place in Chicago. Right now, I'm sitting on a bench in the Great Hall. So there's all these columns, and you have these two elephants, uh, two totem poles, and you have a, a big titanosaur to my left. And a titanosaur is a sauropod a long-necked dinosaur, uh, the largest dinosaur that ever walked planet Earth. And what's interesting, it used to be, the setup in the main hall used to be different. Sue the T-Rex used to be down here, but they built a separate exhibit for Sue to kind of, for one, after 20 years, the technology progressed so much that they could study the dinosaur more with new science and technology so they could learn more about how the animal lived and you know just its habits and and what it ate and its life so they took the time that they were studying sue and kind of rebranded redesigned the museum 
So in, in place of Sue, the dinosaur, the T-Rex, they got Maximo, which is a titanosaur. And it's not the real fossil, it's a cast. And the reason why they did that is because they wanted it to be more interactive. So you can walk underneath the fossil. Um, I don't know if you can touch it, but it's a little bit more interactive. And there's a lot of children that come here and you, you kind of have to appeal. You, you're, you're competing against the shed aquarium with all these live animals. Everything here is dead, so you have to do some things. And they updated their colors to make it more visually appealing. It's kind of like bright blue on, on kind of their brochures and signs, things like that. Uh, they added these benches, what I'm sitting on right now. Uh, all around and they also added these uh, I don't know what you call it they're like plants from the ceiling so you have this big space and some natural sunlight so you have four hanging gardens that come down and it just gives it a little bit more of a uh, lively feel I guess those are what's living in the, in the field museum is the plants you know anytime you add plants to an apartment a house it gives it a little bit of more of a, gives it more life right so you can see how they intended to bring a little bit more life to a place with all dead things so as i'm sitting here i like to just look around and watch watch people watch watch what's going on today what's really interesting usually when the weather is you know below 10 degrees it is quiet in here usually I'll be like the only one that is here and it's a very um, interesting experience with the solitude there's this like deeper relationship you can build with all these artifacts and fossils and the entire space just being one of the only people here. I imagine there'd be less people here, but today it's, it's pretty packed and it's, it's all children and parents for the most part. This is, I think, the Field Museum reopened end of January reopened then and I've come here I think this is my fourth or fifth time what I discovered is that while I can be inside and you know I do my thing inside I am a little bit more extroverted and I do get a lot of my energy from being around people even if it's not just having a conversation but just being in a space with other people I feed off that energy and so here you have the requirement to wear a mask. And it feels like the people that are here, it's like, yeah, just wear a mask. Cool, we can do everything you wanna do. Don't have to make a big deal about it. Just go about your, your life. So I feel that most of the people here are kind of in that category where it's like, we wanna still live our lives. Just wear a mask, you know, be safe. Let's move forward, right? So getting back to people watching though, something I notice is the diversity of shoes. So I'll look at people's shoes and, and this first, I first started doing this a few years ago when I went to member night and um, the Field Museum, only like 10% of all their artifacts are actually on display. So there's different levels. And on member night, you can go down. Uh, I went down to like the fossils where they keep all these fossils. And there's, there was this line <laughs> like a mile long. And I remember like staring back at all the people that were behind me. And I noticed all the different types of shoes. You have people wearing combat boots, basketball shoes, uh, dress shoes, vans. Uh, you have kids, so you have all these different kid shoes and different styles. There's so many different styles of shoes. 
And I think it's, it's really interesting because it, it speaks to the broad appeal of natural history and, and the field museum, natural history museums. Because what they are, what, what natural history museums are, is like just showing the relationship that we have with planet Earth. Like what's happened on Earth, the animals, the plants, the cultures. And we can learn about the world through venturing around the museum, looking at displays, reading the plaques, informing ourselves to have a better understanding of the world we live in. So I think it speaks to that appeal, whereas if I go to the, the Art Institute, which is down the street, kind of a walk, it's kind of a walk, but um, there, the clothes that people wear are much different. It's a lot more, it's a different demographic, whereas here I think it's a very broad demographic. Um, at the Art Institute, it's a little bit more buttoned up, dressier, stylish, art, you know, uh, here, it's like, hey, how are you? Boots, a lot of people are wearing boots today with the snow. Um, some people have bedazzled their shoes. Some people have bright white shoes, pretty daring. Uh, respect that, gotta live on the edge. Uh, there's a little girl here where she's wearing those light up shoes. You know, when you take a step, they light up. That's cool to see. You, you don't see that at the Art Institute, <laughs> that's for sure. Running shoes, running shoes are pretty big here. Um, day like today, lots of strollers. So it's interesting to me to look at the variety of strollers, the designs, um, kind of what they have on the strollers, if the kids are in the strollers or not. It's usually, it looks like, if I'm looking around, the dad is pushing the stroller, the kids are outside the strollers, and the mom is kind of looking after the kids. So that's something I like to do. I, look, I like to look at the shoes. It's interesting to me because I think the shoes you wear it says something about you, um, especially, just like, just like the clothes you wear. I mean, we could spend, we could spend all day here talking about style and fashion. But why don't we go check out an exhibit? Let's go do that. So each time I come to the Field Museum, there are two exhibits that I make sure I always go through, and that's the Evolving Planet, which is on the second floor and that takes you through the history of life on earth and it has the dinosaur fossils in it. The second one is the animals, the animals. Uh, right now I'm in the mammals of Asia and here I just, I love, you have these animals, stuffed animals, you know, by taxidermists. They have the animals in these kind of like display cases. And so you have the animals and also, um, you know, the floor, they have it made to look like their natural habitat. And then what's really neat is the painting, the mural behind them. And I really enjoy looking at these because it really gives me a sense, it feels like I'm traveling in a way. It allows my imagination to think about what it looks like in another country, another place in the world. That's really cool to me. So here, let's look at a Bengal tiger. So it has a plaque next to it, and uh, these two tigers here are taking out a, like a warthog type of thing. Kind of grassy, um, kind of an open prairie. This is in, uh, over in Asia. Let's, so I read the plaque. Heavy hunters rely on stealth. Tigers are one of the largest predators in Asia. A full-grown Bengal tiger can weigh up to 660 pounds. However, their short, powerful legs are compact. Muscular bodies are not suited for chasing prey over long distances. 
Instead, they sneak up and pounce on other animals, such as deer. You see in nearby other cases, so they're, show, they're talking about uh, the other cases. Very meta, they're referencing other uh, displays. The tiger stripes are thought to provide camouflage when it hunts for food. And what's interesting about these displays is that they were all made in like the 1930s here at the Field Museum. So the, the murals are kind of like this watercolor uh, style. And you see this with the, um, the dinosaurs too. Uh, Charles Knight is a, a famous paleo painter. And uh, he's actually like legally blind. <laughs> he painted all these prehistoric images to give the public a sense of, of what life could have been like in prehistoric times. So in these displays, it's very uh, 1930s and the colors, they have this green and uh, what's interesting is going, going around different exhibits and then everything is telling you something, is communicating something to you. And so personally, I feel like the greens here are a little bit too teal. Um, this was in the 30s, so maybe that was kind of like a color back then. Uh, we have carpet here. I used to lay carpeting, actually. My neighbor has a carpet installation company. And uh, during college, during winter and summer break, I would help him out. And one thing I noticed is the, uh, the seams in the carpet. You can tell how old this, this carpeting is. And the color is like a purplish pink. It doesn't look the greatest. Something I can think about while I'm here is how old some of these displays are and the exhibits. It's kind of, it feel, kind of feels sometimes like, okay, we got that one, now let's just keep it that way forever, <laughs> for a long time. But that's also kind of endearing and why I love being here is because everything stays the same. I know exactly what to expect every time I come and it just, it's something in life that just doesn't ever change. And in our ever-changing world, how everything is quickly, quickly, quickly passing us by and, you know, you, you update your news feed and something there is new. Here at the museum, everything is just how you left it. Just like grandma's house, grandma's attic, right? Everything is just where it's just supposed to be. These plaques are from the 1930s and they have a map of Asia and they use colors to show where the original land was that these animals roamed. And then they have another color which represents the current where they are. And so the current is a lot smaller than the original. And then I think to myself, this is 1934, so I'm sure the current areas are even smaller than that. And it makes me think more and more. Something I wonder about is Will there come a time on Earth where humans will feel lonely? Feel lonely because it's, it would be just us, domesticated animals, and we lose that, that wildness. That's something I think about is we, we gotta be careful because I think it's certainly a thing. Like, what if we lose these animals? Once they're gone, they're gone. I used to watch this TV show, Kratz Creatures, when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, during summer break, it'd be on in the morning. And uh, that was so exciting because these two brothers would go out into the wild and talk about animals. And um, brought to you by Cedar Crest Ice Cream on PBS. And... I just, I just loved seeing other places of the world. You know, I think while going somewhere, traveling somewhere, and physically being there is such a rewarding experience in life, we can also use our imaginations to put us in those places. And I think that's why you see so many kids at the Natural History Museum, because they do have imaginations and they can imagine 
oh wow look at this panda right here wow this is asia you know that's a pretty exciting thing i think as an adult uh we become a little jaded right and we don't tap into that that like energy and that enthusiasm and and thinking that we did have when we were young moving forward here uh got a snow leopard kind of in the himalayas pretty cool got sloth bears from india that's cool all these murals are just super cool we got mountain goats water buffalo guar these are these huge cattle kind of in india southeast asia look at that look at the oh man look at the antlers on that animal it's so cool look at the mountains mountains are cool if you can hear me there's a lot of children around now but here we have hyenas hyenas might be the ugliest mammals out there what's cool though what's so beautiful is this mural it has this african sunset sky with purple and orange and pink and these trees you ever see those african trees my roommate uh ken he's working on a children's book and and part of it is this like african sky and we talked about how neither of us have ever been to africa but we know what africa looks like based on all these images and it's interesting to think like when did i first learn about the image of africa you know is it from the lion king or is it you know from is it from the zoo or is it from the museum like and that's what's what's fun i'm sure if you're a parent is you're you're exposing your kids to new things and you get to see their excitement and you get to you know see their reactions that's pretty cool all right so one of the places i love just like chilling out is this this big room that we're in right now and you have this huge mural of the great rift valley and that's where scientists believe humans originated out of so if i'm looking at this uh this mural plaque this spectacular mural is the work of one person alone. Canadian artist Carol Christensen spent 15 months mixing paints and applying them one brush stroke at a time. To avoid distractions, Carol painted mostly at night, arriving at the museum at closing time and leaving in the morning before it opened. She often worked 15 to 16 hours a day. Wow, yeah. Man, this takes a lot of time. What I really love to do is there's four benches in here and I'll sit on a bench and just relax here. Relax here for like half an hour. Just think about life. Just look at this beautiful mural. Imagine myself in Africa. To me, it's, to me, it's very peaceful. Very peaceful. And you got the sound of birds chirping in here. <laughs> All kinds of noises. Uh, you know, when you go through the exhibits, it's interesting to listen to the sounds that they play. And all of that, all those little details add to your experience visiting the museum. It makes it memorable. Hominid headquarters. The same geological forces that have been shaping the Rift Valley of East Africa for the past 14 million years make a great place to find fossils today. Fracturing of the Earth's crust and volcanic activity have exposed ancient sediments buried for millions of years. Within these ancient sediments are abundant fossilized bones of the earliest known hominids, our own human ancestors. Please do not climb on the rocks. Thank you. Volcanic hotspot. The long jagged gash of the Great Rift Valley was shaped by forces deep inside of the Earth. East Africa sits on top of a volcanic hotspot 
which has formed a giant three-armed crack in the Earth's surface. Two of the arms have split wide and deep to become the Red Sea. The third has split apart just far enough for its middle to drop down. This is the Great Rift Valley. What I'm looking at right now is the Lions of Savo. These actually used to be downstairs in the museum and they were in a display case. You could read about them there. So what happened here, if I'm going to read here, the Lions of Savo. During a nine month reign of terror in 1898, these two male lions, known as the Lions of Savo, preyed on construction workers of the British Ugandan Railway in modern day Kenya. By the time the head railway engineer, J.H. Patterson, stopped the lions, they had halted work on the railway for three months, caused hundreds of people to flee for their lives, and killed at least 28 railroad workers. You know, something I think about when I, when I see these lions, you know, it's tragic to lose lives, 28 lives, but if you are going to go out, I mean, being killed by a lion is, you know, a pretty badass way to go out. There are worse things, lamer things to, to go out on. And again, going back to earlier, what we were talking about with death being prevalent in the Field Museum and Natural History Museums, you have to be objective about it, right? Death is something natural that occurs for all of life. And for life to continue on, death needs to happen, right? I don't know, lines. Lines isn't a... It's definitely memorable, right? I mean, you're kind of immortalized for the, the rest of eternity, you know? Or until life ends, right? As we know it. I'm now back in the main hall. So to wrap up our, our very quick tour today, I would encourage people to come to the Field Museum if they want to think more about their relationship with natural history and planet Earth. Something I love about museums is, especially here at the Field Museum, is they just give you information. They don't tell you what to think or what to feel. And I think in today's society, everything is always trying to tell you what, what you should think and what you should feel. And I like that this museum in particular just presents information and it allows you to get your mind going and you can think by yourself, inside yourself and think about that, right? Some of my favorite exhibits here are the evolving planet that has the dinosaurs, um, the mammals and uh, animals, what we just went through. It's way more extensive than what, <laughs> what we went through. Um, ancient Americas is a great one. Learning about how ancient people in the Americas lived and what they believed in, how they ate, and what, you know, just like the culture and everything. Um, it's very insightful and it allows me to gain perspective on where we are today and how to move forward. Ancient Egypt, uh, they have African exhibit. They have uh, Southeast Pacific. One, th one exhibit I, I really like in particular recently is the China one. I really enjoy learning about the history of China and its diversity and ideas and culture. And uh, that's something that's really appealing to me. There's a lot of, oh man, I mean, there's so much to, to talk about and to go further in, but uh, the Field Museum, started in 1921 i always thought it was like out in the field like you know excavating stuff and that's why it was called the field museum but it's actually after marshall field and i learned that because one time they had a chicago world fair exhibit and i went through it very quickly and at the end i <laughs> i asked the cashier i was like i've seen all this stuff before uh, what <laughs> And she was like, oh, so after the World Fair, uh, they wanted a museum of the World Fair. 
So Marshall Field built the museum, the Field Museum, and then brought stuff from the World Fair here. So a number of artifacts inside the museum were actually displayed at the World Fair in 1893. And the World Fair, uh, I mean, that's a whole nother awesome event in Chicago's history, world history. It really put Chicago on the map. And uh, it's really interesting to see, as you walk through the museum, you'll see stickers and displays of artifacts that, that were in the World Fair. They have like a little emblem by them. They got a cafe area too. So I like to come here and grab some coffee and just sit, stare at the dinosaurs, do some work. Uh, it's very relaxing to me. It's my favorite place. Hope you enjoyed this quick adventure we just went on. Um, if you have any questions about the Field Museum or if you ever want to come, I'm a member here and uh, come with me. I'll get you in for free. You can explore together, learn about the world. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful day.